Hey guys, today we're going to work on building a little drop box. This is for a supply. I'm going to show you how we can build it with some simple tools, a little four foot brake, some S-lock, using stick pins and some glue, and a little bit of Reflectix insulation. But we're going to work on building those. You can make them whatever size you want, but these particular boxes are 14 and a quarter by 6 and a quarter by 17 inches deep with a 1 inch flange. I have a piece of metal I cut out already. It's a four foot width by 18 inches because basically my box is going to be 17 inches tall with a one inch flange. So that includes added together 18 inches. Uh, I'll make an end cap for the bottom of the box once we're done. I'm going to go ahead and section off. I have a one inch flange on the end to overlap. Box is going to be 14 and a quarter, six and a quarter, 14 and a quarter, six and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that out and I'll show you how I do that. I have our tape measure set up, measuring a one inch flange here, adding six and a quarter to make it seven and a quarter, adding 14 and a quarter to make it 21 and a half. There's a boo boo. <laughs> 27 and three quarters, then 14 and a quarter more to bring it to 42. So I'm going to make lines along the top, lines along the bottom, and then draw across where I'm going to make my breaks. All right, we've traced our marks all the way across so I can uh, break 90 degree breaks each one of those lines. We also have our one inch flange drawn on the top. Go ahead and cut notches here, here, and here. And then shave the ends down. Alright, there's our notches. Notch on the end. Notch at each line. Because whenever it's all folded up, we're going to bend these flanges out. And that's what's going to hold the little drop against the floor. Oh, we have our metal set up against the brake, slide it through, line up our mark here, clamp the brake down, clamp it down so it doesn't go anywhere, then we can take it, break a 90 degree up, break it down, and there's our 90 degree. So we're going to come to each one of these lines, break it up until we're completely finished. Alright guys, the next step is I'm going to cut a piece of S-lock for this particular run right here. Uh, some of you may have the capability of making Pittsburgh seams, but my machine really doesn't do that. So I'm just going to put a piece of S-lock in and screw it off. So I'm going to cut one about an inch in so it doesn't interfere with the caps. And I'm going to go ahead and place it on there and put it together. We have our S-lock on. Basically it fits over one piece of metal and a notch. And then the other side, the flange fits into it. So basically it's shaped like an S. Um, there's two versions of it. We have standing S lock. We see there's the S shape. Also has 90 degree stand. I use that for angle. We have our S lock up here. And this is a standard piece of S lock. You can see what it looks like. So one flange fits in one side, one flange fits in You can in pass there. a screw through it here uh, to adjoin the two pieces and then tape it or mastic or whatever. Our S lock is screwed in place and now I'm going to take these flanges the two end flanges can be bent with six inch folding tongs and then the two ends I'm going to bend with the folding bar. These are my Malco folding tongs. I've had them for a long time. I don't know how long it is, but it's been a long time. The handle was lost in like 2003 or something probably. Uh, so I've just been using them like this for the whole time. Now, I don't use them very much anymore because I do mostly service, but they're perfect for the present activity. Put them right there on the line. You can fold them straight back. And good to go. You have your fold. This is my Malco folding bar. It has a 3 8 lip on one side. See over here. And a 1 inch lip on this side. This is a 1 inch flange. But if you want to line it up with smaller flanges, you can. You just have to take care of what you're doing. That does a good job of uh, folding flanges. So I'm going to use that on these particular flanges on each side to bend them out. The bar fits over the flange just like this and all you have to do is bend it straight backwards and you have a nice 90 as well. Now that we have our flanges we can flip it over and line the bottom with S-lock all the way around and I'll show you how to build a cap to go in that particular fitting. Before I put the cap on I'm going to put a few stick pins on the inside of this fitting 
all stick pins are, little devices to hold the insulation in, have adhesive on the back, little prong on the front, and there's a little piece that fits over this, we'll see in a second. So I just put, I usually put four, one, two, three, four, so I have enough room in the middle to cut a collar. Um, I'm gonna put four of those on, and then we'll see how to put the insulation on. All right, we have our four stick pins down. So what I'm gonna go do is cut off a piece of insulation that fits this. Basically, I'm looking at about 14 and a quarter by 17 inches long. I'll go ahead and cut that insulation, and we'll see how to mount it. I've cut my piece of Reflectix insulation. Thank you, Mr. Ralph. Uh, this is actually just 4.2, but you can go all the way up to R6. Uh, you have to add air spaces to it to achieve R8. But for the purpose I'm using this thing for, R4.2 is just fine. So what I'll do is I'll put adhesive on this. Actually, I'll probably put it on the flip side. And then put adhesive on the inside of here and stick them together. The adhesive I'm using is Hardcast Travel Tech. So, really nice stuff. I have a different one over here. I haven't tried yet. That's Durodyne Web Adhesive. Should be the same thing. I've come prepared. Um, of course, there are larger containers of this stuff, but I don't do a whole lot of it, so I just I don't buy those. So you spray them on, and you see it's kind of a little web-like right there. So I'll spray this thing down, spray the inside down, and stick them together, and we'll go from there. After both the sides are sprayed down, the inside and the back of the insulation, give it about 10-20 seconds to set up a little bit, and then we're going to slide it in there, watching your hands on those stick pins. All right, we've got our insulation in place. I have these small little washers. They lock in place. So what we'll do is we'll pull one on, slide it down, and they're then locked in place. So I'll do it for all of these, then finish the rest of these sides, and we'll get onto the end cap. We have all of our insulation in. Now I'm going to flip things over so we can get started on our end cap. We lined the entire top with S-Lock. Now I'm going to lay out and cut a cap, which will basically be a flat piece of metal with four flanges, one here, one on the back, one on the side, and one on the front. So we'll lay that out. They're all one inch flanges. First, we're marking off the length. We have a 14 and a quarter inch side, so we'll add a one inch flange. Come to 15 and a quarter and 16 and a quarter, and that's two inches of flange, and the 14 and a quarter remaining is the top. We'll do the same thing with the depth. Okay, we're measuring for our depth. We have a one inch flange here. We measure six and a quarter plus one is seven and a quarter and eight and a quarter. So two inches worth of flanges and the six and a quarter that's remaining is the depth. So we have our depth that is six and a quarter and our width 14 and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and draw the lines for that and cut it out. We've connected our lines here. What we'll do is we'll cut out the outer line and then we'll cut notches across here, across here, across here and across here so we can easily bend the flanges. All right, we've cut it out and cut our notches in it. What we'll do, take our folding tongs and bending bar and bend these flanges straight up and then we can get ready to mount some insulation to the end cap. All right, guys, we've got our flanges bent on the end cap. We've got two stick pins in there. We'll go ahead and put the adhesive down and go ahead and put this insulation on there and then we'll mount it to our ductwork. All right, guys, we're gonna put our little flanges there into the grooves on the S-lock then screw off the ends so it does not come out. All right, put our cap in. Have a couple screws on each side. I'm gonna mastic each of the seams, but I'm not gonna do that right now because we're gonna mastic pretty much the whole duct because it's sliding through concrete. So we're gonna use that as sort of a protective layer. Um, but that's it. We have our box here. Just a couple more finished examples over here. Boxes and there's a few more I did the other day. I had to make 13 in total, so I have my hands full. But uh, that's how you make a quick drop box, and I'll see you guys on the next one.